Hey everyone! We've looked at an awful lot of sheets in past episodes, so today I'm going to talk about something different. A nanomaterial that I did my PhD research on, and which is already starting to appear in commercial products, silver nanowires. As the name suggests, these are incredibly thin wires made up of silver atoms. They are typically anywhere between 10 and 100 nanometers in diameter, and about 10 to 100 micrometers in length. To put that tininess into perspective, an isolated silver nanowire on a printed full stop is about the same scale as a garden hose unravelled on a football pitch. Interestingly, perhaps, they are also perfect single crystals of silver. This means that all silver nanowires are essentially the same shape. Instead of being cylindrical, they actually have a pentagonal cross-section. Now, normal metal wire, that you might find in the walls of your home, or attached to electrical appliances, is made by a process called drawing. In short, a big block of metal is passed through sets of rollers that stretch and squash the material until it's a fraction of a millimetre in diameter. Silver nanowires are produced using a completely different approach. They aren't made, they're grown. Silver nanowires are grown in solution using the polyol process. A silver salt, like silver nitrate, is dissolved in a solvent called ethylene glycol, which is chemically related to the food ingredient glycerin. The glycol is a very weak reducing agent. This means that it converts the metal ions in the solution back into metal atoms by donating some electrons. As this process happens, tiny silver crystals start to form as the metal precipitates, because it's no longer soluble. The really clever bit is the addition of a polymer called polyvinyl pyrrolidone, or PVP. PVP has a huge number of other uses. It coats soluble drug tablets, it's a constituent of hair gel, and it's even used to produce white wine. When added to the polyol process, PVP attaches to the silver crystals, leaving the ends exposed. This means that as more silver atoms are produced, they can only attach to the exposed faces, and the crystals start to grow. First into rods, then into wires. Once all the reactants are used up, the nanowires are separated out and washed. Now we have a swirly bottle of silver nanowire ink, but what can we do with it? Silver nanowires are extremely exciting as a transparent conductive film material. Transparent conductive films are everywhere, from the touchscreen in your phone, to solar panels, car window heaters, LEDs, and electrochromic glass. All of these applications need two basic things. A material which is very transparent, and which also conducts electricity. Both of these properties are determined by how easy it is for electrons to move around inside the material. For example, materials which are very conductive, like metals, are usually not very transparent, as the free electrons can absorb or reflect all of the incoming light. On the other hand, materials which are very transparent, like glass, have tightly bound electrons which can't move, and so don't conduct electricity. Silver nanowires have just the right balance because of their tiny size, and so not only conduct electricity, but are also basically invisible. Right now, there is a single material used in all those applications I mentioned before. Indium Tin Oxide, or ITO. ITO is a pretty good material on the whole, but suffers from cost issues, high temperature processing, and generally being very brittle. Silver nanowires, though, are processable at room temperature, and are extremely flexible when laid down as a thin coating. They can even be sprayed on with an airbrush, just like paint. This opens up new possibilities for smart, interactive devices that ITO simply struggles to make happen. My group has done quite a bit of work on understanding how silver nanowires can integrate into existing processes for making shatterproof touchscreens. As an example, I recently built a bendy sensor to show just how well this technology can work. Because nanowire films are very flexible, we can deposit them on plastic surfaces instead of glass. Combine this with a flexible display, and you're most of the way to that rollable smartphone you never knew you wanted. But that is only the beginning. A recent article published in Nature Communications describes how silver nanowires and graphene can be added into contact lenses to produce an invisible sensor that can measure blood sugar with an RFID reader. The nanowires are used to make an antenna, with a graphene-based transistor doing the measurements. This sort of technology could completely change medical monitoring for diabetics, for example, replacing blood testing with non-invasive, on-demand measurements. 
Another article describes how nanowires can be made into stretchy antennas for wireless communication, a complete necessity when you are trying to develop technologies that can integrate into clothing, for example. The authors used a clever trick here. They crumpled up the nanowires before putting them onto their stretchy surface. This causes the nanowires to become wavy, and so when the film is stretched, they simply straighten out, instead of slipping apart or breaking. A really simple idea, but still incredibly clever. Given all we've seen today, I hope you'll agree that silver nanowires have lots of potential. In fact, it's been predicted that nanowires will take over a significant portion of the markets that ITO is currently dominant in, in the next decade or so. There are already a couple of manufacturers releasing products that feature touchscreens made from silver nanowires. The future is already here. See you next time! Thanks for watching everyone! If you like what I do, please consider supporting my work via my Patreon page, where you'll have access to a range of in-depth discussions on the physics, chemistry and engineering of nanomaterials. If you'd like regular updates, please subscribe and like the video. It helps so much, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.